Hi guys, welcome back to the Beyond Football podcast. Today joining me is Andy Kanga, footballer, barber, content creator, uni student. Welcome to the Beyond Football podcast. Pleasure to be here, bro. Nice for having me. Nah, we had to get you on. You know, I didn't know that we we actually played against each other when we were younger. Say so, when? You know, remember Premier League tournament? For West Ham? No, Chelsea. Chelsea? Yeah. Back at uh, Warwick. Warwick. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See? I remember, bro. That's crazy. I didn't know you was at Chelsea. What what age? That 11? Under, under 12s to 12s. under 16s, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's mad stuff. I didn't even know. That. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't that's know. how the academy sisters is mad. You see, when we were at Warwick, yeah. there were so many teams. You know, when we were Literally, lining up yeah. um, before the tournament. Yeah. And then there's so many guys that you just see all the guys in the mm. other teams that you met before. Good like, memories, man. Good memories. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me then. Was it always a dream then? To play prof- to play football. Yeah, that's the main goal, you know. Uh, growing up, just, my dad loved football. He passed that on to me. So that's all I've been loving since a young age. Yeah. yeah. What has your journey been like from in the academy system? Obviously... I joined quite early, so I was like six years old, joined Liverpool, um, went through the pre-academy, signed at nine, went through from nine to 16s, obviously got let go at 16s, went to Blackpool, scholar there for two years, got let go there at the end of uh, that stop lockdown period, and then um, ended up having to go to uni at Loughborough, so yeah. yeah. And then, so you've been... Release twice now. Twice, yeah. Something I never thought would ha- ever happen once. Oh, really? You know How I mean? come? So I just went from, you, you sign at nine. Yeah. And then every two years you get contract offers and stuff like that. And just just kept coming for me. So I just thought I was just going to stay. I didn't even know about the scholarship stuff like that. I didn't know anything about that. So I just wow. assumed I'd be there forever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then I got to 16s and then I got injured. I got a stress fracture in my back. And um, that kept me out for like seven to nine months. Came back, first game back, I got injured again. Ankle injury. Pain. So then I, I was a right back at the time. So the, the coach spoke to me. He's like, obviously, you might think you can stay in, in self scholar, but game time, they probably wouldn't be able to give me that. That's yeah to that's, catch that's up. the that's the yeah. that's exactly what i got told is it when i was under 16 at chelsea really? yeah game time mm-hmm. but that's how they usually break it down yeah in the, in the, did you have a meeting it was literally my dad had the meeting so i didn't actually have the meeting you didn't, you didn't go with them i wasn't playing so i was like what's going on what's going on I told my dad oh. my dad came in he spoke to him the day before or like the couple of days before he told me at the end of the meeting that they're letting me go mm. i was like what i was like that's mad okay. Next next session, I went. I spoke to the guy for now, and he's speaking to me. He was just like, "Um, I think I was quite behind when I came back. Anyway, obviously I was nine months out. Yeah. So to develop and catch up, they probably wouldn't be able to offer me that game time mm-hmm. to stay in and earn myself a scholar. So probably they said it would be best for me to move on, get some game time elsewhere yeah. that I would need. It makes sense. Yeah, and probably obviously before then, being out for nine months, I probably probably didn't um. And that scholar, yeah, do you know what I mean? They probably didn't see enough of me, so because of those, that yeah, injury. exactly, yeah. But that's so. that's the detrimental effect that injuries yeah, have, literally, big time. So, so do mm. you think? No, what are you saying? No, nah, go on. Do you think they didn't have you in the meeting because they were like, I'm not sure oh. why I wasn't. I feel like I probably would have deserved the meeting at least. Yeah, you know I, mean? I yeah. got told through me, my dad. So, but that was definitely something strange. But like I said, I just took it on the chin. Um. Trying not to let it affect me. Um, I just went on from there. I just wanted to look for the next club. I accepted it and thought, cool, that's what's that's happened now. It's football, do you know what I mean? I didn't mm-hmm. think I'd ever see the day. Why okay, why didn't you think that? Because when you when I was at Liverpool, I was like, obviously I'll come to it in my ability. Um, like I said, every all the contracts like I got offered them without 
thinking yeah just, yeah see you, that guy yeah, this, yeah. Nah, i Put remember you back in the tournament this guy was a form <laughs> this guy was <laughs> no, do that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, yeah, so. i wore it when we see him on the liverpool team but like, he's this <laughs> Right Bro, back. don't do well, that. Right back then. Yeah, I was a right back oh, then. Oh, he's this yeah. guy who's crunching up people. <laughs> Bro, don't gas me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so literally, I didn't think I'd ever um, get released or whatever. But then when it did happen, took on the chin, went to Blackpool. Mm. And then from Blackpool, Liverpool, Blackpool is complete different end of the spectrum. You know what I mean? At Blackpool. Were they cut, cut? Three? three or four or so something. Cap one yeah, to cap yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that experience like? Different. If you see Blackwell as a town, it's mad compared to obviously a city like Liverpool. So, um, but in terms of like professionalism, obviously Liverpool's elite. Yeah. And then Blackpool's just a bit, a bit off. But I still love the experience of both ends because you learn. I learn a lot about, about myself. Um. And experience itself with other other players from there that I met there, that I feel like I've I've made brothers for life as well from being there. That we all got released together. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. being where at Blackpool, at Blackpool, yeah. Oh, because only one player uh, got offered the pro. Yeah. At, at, um, during that lockdown period, so it's so mad how there's such a big difference between Cat One. Yeah. And who gets retained? Yeah. I never because. I was at Chelsea okay, in West yeah. Ham. Yeah. I never knew that that many players in mm. like lower cat mm-hmm. category teams get released. Yeah, it's like, mad. And a lot of them now, I know some players who have just stopped. They don't play stopped. no more. Yeah, it's I heard crazy. the statistics about um, players who drop out by twenty one don't play or something like. Yes, yeah, five like, out of or yeah, eight out of nine players. I was like, nah, surely not. But it's, I'm. It's but mad. we're all twenty one now, bro. I'm seeing yeah, that guys aren't that. playing no more, bro. It's mad. I've always said that if you're 21, you're still playing at a good level. Yeah, like, yeah. You can call yourself a professional yeah, footballer. Yeah, literally. Because it's actually, man, like, those guys, or you get contracts early, yeah. stuff like that. You yeah. see them fizzle out of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, guys who get offered, they're pre scholar mm-hmm. and they're pro as well. Yeah, and now they're, yeah. Some, and they're some of them, you're playing higher than them. Tell, now, bro. tell, tell yeah, me, literally. what stories have you heard of that? Nah, my boy. Um, I'm not gonna drop his name or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he got. Uh, actually, no, nah, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. But he got no. Nah. nah, I'm not gonna talk about it. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I've seen stuff. it. I've seen yeah. it. Bare times it happens where there's guys. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, you always think that you've made it. Yeah, literally, because you get an 16, early, 17, yeah, yeah. 18, yeah. even 19. I was yeah. a, I was a pro for two okay. two years. Okay. I'm, I'm still young. I, yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. I was a pro. Like, yeah. we're, like, we're old, but but you still haven't made it, you no, know? literally, no. No, no. You've got to be like, mm-hmm. when you're 21, 22, pushing to have a career, that's when you can say, mm-hmm. I was then thinking, because you said you don't understand why, or you, you were surprised when you obviously got released. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you think about the academy system makes it like that for young players where it's difficult to take or it might be to a take the um the disappointment. The Obviously, to be fi- to credit to Liverpool, they helped me find another club, so they put me on the market straight away. Helped me try to find other clubs and stuff like that. But um, I do think it is tough for some players because it's like some players might not have that confidence. They'll be like, "Oh, that's I've been at Liverpool all my life. I got let go. What do I do now? Everyone sees me as the Liverpool player. This and that." My family knows me as the Liverpool player, mm. the footballer. Couple of years down the line, they'll be like, "Oh, how's Liverpool? You're not there no more." You're not there, time. Yeah. <laughs> I got, <laughs> like, I, got I got, I got family members still asking me, "Oh, how's Chelsea?" Oh, you're just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, they ain't got a clue. They don't, and they don't. Once they, they hear, once they hear, you're not there. They just, they just think and the they worst. look at you different now. Yeah. They, don't, they don't shout they, you no more. They don't shout, bro. It's crazy. I got one uncle he used to love me, bro. Like he doesn't shout you. I've not shouted him in years, bro. No <laughs> way. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. But they don't understand in it, so. I think the journey we're on, you just gotta keep going until something clicks. Yeah. And then um it's just life in it. Just how, just how it is. That's it. They'll all come back. They'll understand later. So Yeah. Yeah. And you've had so many experiences where those two setbacks are like or you too early setback. I yeah, think a release yeah, is classified yeah. as like too early yeah, setbacks definitely, where definitely. something you've been working on all your life. Yeah. 
and you go like, mm, yeah, it's you're like, not good enough. Yeah, you kind of think. Sometimes I'm like, should I be doing this? If if I keep going, is right. it like getting blood out of a stone? Do you know what I mean? Is this is this what I'm yeah. supposed to be doing? But I feel like the talent that I feel like God's Ooh. given me. Do you know what I mean? He's given me this dream. Mm. So I feel like I'd be a disservice to him if I just stopped. That's it. So that's why I'm just going to keep going. I, what you said there is facts. Because yeah. for me, I've been released three times. Okay. <laughs> so How's that been for you? That, so when did you... 16. First got released, yeah? Yeah, same as you. Okay. 16, innit? Was that at... Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea, okay, Chelsea, Chelsea, yeah. But for always, through those experiences, I was always like, blood out of stone. Yeah. I was always like, what am I doing wrong? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. It's yeah. mad. But what I was going to say is that, um, I even forgot, but you talked about uh, God-given dream yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like, so is that what kept you resilient through those two setbacks? Yeah, because it's like, as much as I'm getting the setbacks, I'm like, but I know I'm good. Do you know what I mean? I know I can mm. do it. If, I, if it was different, I was like, you know what? I'm not that good. I'm yeah. not that good at all. Maybe I should do something else. Even though I could go and be good at something else that like you've seen, I can do my barbering, I can yeah. do my content creation and stuff like that. But I don't get that same feeling from, you know, when you just slapped in the net, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, it's not, I don't get that same feeling. So yeah. I feel like football is what I'm supposed to be in. So that's why I just keep going. I go, I, obviously I'm at uni as well. Mm. I'm sat in the classroom and that, bro, I'm not, I feel like I'm not supposed to be here. Do you know what I mean? I don't understand what's going on and whatever. Yeah. So, I'd rather be on the pitch. That's what I've known all my life. So that's why I just keep going with that. That's it. Um, back then, how did your, the people around you or social media, stuff like that? Because, you know, when we're at Warwick and yeah. all those tournaments, yeah. the guy doing the snap, I yeah. know you're an influencer. <laughs> how did that, or how did you, how did all that affect you when you went through those releases? As in, how did like handling what people thought about you as that footballer? Yeah. Um, when I first got released, even going to a, a lesser club, so I went to Leeds. My first club when I went to when I first got released was Leeds, and obviously at the time they weren't in the prem or anything. So, I was, in my head, as big time as it is, you're comparing the the level of club. Mm. I was embarrassed to tell. My boys, yeah, I'm going in at Leeds. Even though it's a big club now, I look at it, I was like, I should have took that with both hands, you mm. know what I mean? So it's like, you do get that, not peer pressure, but just like, you that feel like- social getting, influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was tough, but at the end of the day, it's your life, do you know what I mean? You got to take it with both hands, so that's why I ended up going to Blackpool. Yeah. yeah. And you get- well, clubs get bare stick mm -hmm. about the release. They mm -hmm. don't care about players. Mm -hmm. What do you think they can maybe do better in your in your situation? Or do you think it's players that need to do more? Yeah, sometimes I think before you go and point fingers and blame, or if you got to look at yourself, I think that's something I've done a lot from, that's something I've took from these setbacks about self-reflection. Yeah, they said this. Yes, they said that. But what? can you do to change what happens? You know what I mean, what can you fix? And I think that's what everyone has to look at first. And then you can start thinking, okay, but maybe he could have helped me here or this club could have done this for me. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's better to look at yourself first, see what you could have done better and then go from there. Yeah. Self-improvement always, bro. I see it. Yeah. And you've... Because it's that, that victim mentality. You'd be like, oh, this is not my fault. Oh, this club, this coach didn't like me, this and that, but... I it's not going to get you anywhere. No, you can't keep crying about it. you got to look at yourself and see what you could have done better. Yeah, and that's the mentality yeah. that's gotten you to where you are yeah. now. Yeah, obviously so, on the journey to where I'm, I'm trying to be, so. Yeah. Yeah. And you've recently started talking about that journey on your, yeah. on your YouTube channel, yeah. TikTok, mm -hmm. all of that. Why? What's the reason behind that? Um, Mostly for, for myself. I like to document a lot of things. Everyone calls me the vlogger, yeah, do you know what I mean? I always have my phone out snapping and stuff like that. So, um, but I was actually inspired by a player called, you know, Connor Parsons. Connor Parsons. So he's the he's he's yeah, the trailblazer. Yeah, literally. So, 
obviously before I, I I saw his YouTube and stuff like that, me and my boy Riley Smith, we were talking about um we should do like a YouTube thing because mm. he was he went out to America. We was gonna do like a joint joint thing. Yeah, yeah. so I'm showing See how the differences. I'm, yeah, literally. Yeah. That was back in 2020. So from then I was just it was in the back of our heads and we didn't actually do it. Then when did I start my first one? Last September. Something happened. Something deep happened. Do you know what I mean? And that's just a little little breakup. Do you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, talk, talk to you. <laughs> now we're not gonna go into detail, do you know Yeah, what I mean? but, but how did that affect you? <laughs> it affected me that when something like tragic like that happens, mm. um, or traumatic or whatever, you try and well, I've tried to make myself feel better, do you know what I mean? By improving myself. Yeah. So, so I just used that fuel. Boom, boom. And just put it into myself. Just kept working. Kept working. I thought, yeah. what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So started my YouTube, done my video, set it up. Now it's got 50k views, that first video. Yeah, my journey one. A lot of people have reached out saying, oh, I can relate. This is deep. Mm. I want you to make it now. This and, that. and I've got a lot of help as well from like people trying to, like agents and stuff like that, yeah. businessmen trying to help me. So through that experience that traumatic this is what happens transferred so it into a yeah, positive literally. that's beautiful though yeah. that's how it should be yeah but with that youtube you see more and more players taking yeah. taking back the power into their hands yeah, literally connor Parsons. he's got loads of opportunities yeah higgsy mm-hmm. me yeah, <laughs> ben brooks who we had on yeah on this podcast you it, can literally sit around and um and then moan yeah be victim yeah but it's like uh, that's why I'm so I'm so it pushes it, it's motivating to see all those guys doing that literally because it's like okay cool instead of me saying ah oh, sulking You're let's go yourself. do let's show people that look we're actually putting in the work here mm-hmm. and then people it actually creates opportunities literally. so people see oh rah right, that that video was hard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's just it's just mad literally what. Well, let me see. I was going to say that um, you spoke about the breakup. Yeah. How was your experience with girls and being in the academy system at Liverpool? Uh, I, was always, you know, I was always quite focused as a kid. Yeah. Came from my parents, you know what I mean? I had a girlfriend and yeah, yeah eight, I broke up with her. Because I was, hey, I told her I wanted to... Yeah. <laughs> no, I said I wanted to focus on football. football yeah, yeah, literally. So... <laughs> With girls and stuff, I was always just focused on football, really. Okay, so yeah. you didn't have the issue where <laughs> on the gram, <laughs> nah, all that the girl me. on nah. you. Nah, that wasn't me still. Oh, uh, nah, you, you, you didn't take advantage of that nah, Liverpool nah, status nah. in school and that. Oh, well, but to be fair, you guys went to the Liverpool yeah, school, so. school. So everyone already knew, and we already had the target on our backs, you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. what do you mean target on your back? Obviously, there was a bit of conflict between the normal, like, yeah, the normal, and then us, they saw us as big time or whatever. So, mm. uh, there was that a bit of friction, but it's just life, and then you just got on with it. You just yeah. got on with it. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's similar. That's mad because, in, in my experience, we they actually stopped okay. the school at Chelsea when it was at under 15 and 16. We were supposed to go into the school, okay, but instead, we all just went in, mm-hmm. did day release mm-hmm. two day. Mm-hmm. I reckon that that was it was beneficial because mm-hmm. then we weren't all like oh just football yeah I was able to still have my friends in yeah. school but I I can just imagine if they now pulled us out of our schools mm-hmm. like local schools I, I wouldn't have that relationship with the guys yeah the friends that I made at that school now mm-hmm. which would have been long mm-hmm. because <laughs> the friends you make in football. Uh, when you move on to another club, they're not there with peak. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you have that connection. Mm, yeah, it's spe- rare to get that, that special bond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's tough because you'll see it could be a high and by thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Some some of them I've not spoke to in years, like a proper conversation, whatever. So, but there's some I'm still in contact with now. Um, but that's only because you've had that that years of building that friendship. Yeah. Obviously, being at the same club, going to the same school. But then when you go to other clubs, they're not there with they're you anymore. There. You know what I mean? so, and it's so hard to make another. F- yeah. So then that builds on up to the. It makes it so hard to build that identity beyond football because okay. like you just your friends are in Literally, football. Yeah, yeah. And then for example, now it's like because we're just playing football, mm-hmm. 
whenever we want to do something outside of football, mm. if we ain't got those guys, yeah. it's just tight. Yeah, yeah. I find that tough as well. I find it tough to make friends myself anyway, because like you said, if that identity, that's how I, I grew up with friends from playing football. Oh, yeah. I didn't really have friends outside of football. Um, so yeah, it's a bit, bit tough, but now I'm starting to open up more. Um, chilling with guys who don't play football, yeah. but as well as that, it's like, cause football is what I want to do. I'm going to put myself around people oh. who have the same mindset, have the same goals, which I think helps you a lot because if they don't, if you can't keep yourself in check, they will. Cause they'll be like, mm. look away, we're trying to go. You're not keeping up type of thing. Um, so I think it's important who you you have around you. So, especially with my um, I got a good group now around me. When I'm when I'm cut um slacking, they keep me in check. When they're slacking, I keep them in check yeah. as well. So now are they all footballers? Yeah, well they're they came, all playing come through the academy system. So well. one was at Everton. I know. Yeah, he was at the tournament as yeah, well. Yeah, really. yeah. I know. yeah, and then one was has went through the academies as well. But we're all playing non-league now. Yeah, and we're just trying to elevate keep going higher so we're all on the same journey you so, need yeah. that though yeah literally you need that to keep you pushing yeah but covid was a was a crazy period tough, for football tough, that tough, tough that tough. really messed with a lot of people's yeah, journeys yeah, and definitely. potentials i know people a lot of people can think back and that like, they hate covid like covid <laughs> as much as yeah you can say that. you hate i but i enjoyed covid bro like yeah that period of being at home. Yeah, yeah. That, it was a weird but different experience again. Mm. But obviously in terms of football, it, it just messed a, oh, everything so, up. So much uncertainty. Yeah. Because so many clubs were like, oh, yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. Let's yeah, just... I know. I know. So many guys, their journeys got cut off because of that. Yeah, literally. That's the most disappointing thing out of everything, really. So talk me through. How did you... What, what happened after that? After Blackpool? Um, getting so obviously, the COVID process. was around March. Um, so we got let go on a WhatsApp call, conference call. Because of lockdown. Because of lockdown. Heck. Yeah. From there, obviously, they told us to sign up for uni. Yeah. And I was one of them guys. I was like, uni, like, you's going Louder. uni, bro. I'm not going to go to uni. <laughs> Everyone's talking about uni, uni, uni. What if we do make it? What if we do get a pro, whatever? I signed up anyway. Mm. Um, I signed up for UCAS. I was meant to go Manny Met. So I'm near Manchester. I didn't want to go Liverpool. I, I'd like being away from home, do you know what I mean? So I mm. wanted something different. And then my boy was like, what about Loughborough? Because obviously when I first got released at 16, um, PDP, development camp. Yeah, we Premier went to, League. yeah. We went to one of them for a couple of days. I remember it was good. Like there was a couple of players from like Fulham and stuff like that. Sunderland. So I signed up to go there. But that was from March you start in October, innit? So yeah. there was a whole period I thought, I'll sign up, hoping I'm not going to go. And then by then, surely I found a club, but it was tough. I uh, tried to go and try a couple of places like Stoke. Yeah. I was meant to go in at Stoke, uh, but I think they brought someone else in, so I didn't even get to go in on trial. Damn. I was like, God, bro, that was a chance, bro. <laughs> I was like, imagine I went to Stoke. But then, yeah. Just kept trying looking for clubs, looking for clubs, playing non-league. At the time, you obviously you come from a, an academy, you're looking at non-league, yeah. like, what's non-league? Bro? I'm not going to go there. Which yeah. is pr probably something I should have went straight into. I could have played mm -hmm. higher from early, but um, from there, trying to go for it, trying to go for it, and then ended up having to go uni. Yeah. yeah. What is it about non-league that, makes it so hard for players to drop down because I found it the exact same. Um, when I was in the academy, I was just like, nah, I'm never, yeah. it's never that. Nah, no, no. Because it's looked down. Because I, I think when we're younger, we're just like, it's so, we just think it's so bad, mm -hmm. so bad. Mm -hmm. But that's why I would, I would think if we had more like education as to Lit what yeah, it actually definitely, is. Yeah, Because before I, ever, I started playing non-league, I never knew like Bro, I didn't the quality have a, of football. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue, but there's some top, bro, there's top players in non-league, bro, I didn't know how, and the competition's even higher now, bro, there's clubs where, when I first got released, I was like, um, nah, I'm not going to go there, that club's not that good or whatever, now yeah. I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, bro, that's a good Should've, club, bro, yeah. 
I imagine I can play for them. Look where I can go on from there. But it's, if you had that education of knowing that non-league could be another good route as well, mm. then I would have looked at it differently. But yeah. Would you think like clubs can do now for, for the younger players mm. in the academy system? So definitely got to be, that. like we said, in the education show them that if they are going to release players, that this could be a route as well. Non-league route, yeah. yeah. There's a non-league route. Because to be fair, they never actually spoke about non-league. I've never, bro, until Blackpool, I didn't know anything about non-league. non-league. Yeah. But you would expect so, yeah, Liverpool, why are they going to talk about non-league? Do you know what I mean? It's true, it's true. Still yeah. four leagues below well, that. It's the reality yeah. though. Yeah. Because yeah. if you see, as you said, all those guys by 21. Yeah. Who still... I know. So they need to, they need to switch that up. Yeah, they have to. Definitely. So then after that period of Oh, I could go uni or I could sign. Yeah. What happened? Um, Started uni. Complete different world to what I'm used to. I'm still waiting for that. Obviously, I'm still talking to agents and whatever. They're still working for me, trying to help me get out of the uni and whatever. So Mm. then a chance came. I went to Galatasaray. No That was, bro, a whole year. Galatasaray. Yeah. On trial. On trial. Three-day trial, but. A whole year after COVID, I thought that whole year I've been just suffering work and trying to make yeah. it pro, whatever. The chances came now, Galatasaray, I could change my life around in it, like wipe out all that hard work. Yeah. What were you doing throughout that year, though? Obviously, going lectures and that, playing for the uni team, playing for the second team. Yeah. Because I was meant to play for the first team, but because I joined later, they wanted me to come for pre season, but I wanted to stay at home. Yeah. To try and find a club. Before. Still trying yeah. to, yeah. If I. I felt like going to, at the time, going to uni was like picking something else over football. Over football, yeah. So I was like but delaying now- it, delaying it, delaying it. Okay. Yeah. And then, so yeah, that was what I was doing for the whole year. Then Galatasaray came, went there, felt at home, bro. Like No way. Bro, how, like I was at Liverpool again. <laughs> oh, the what was the facilities like? Facilities top. Obviously, the first team trained on the other side. I saw Falcao and that, bro. I was thinking, what? Live all. I saw Falcao and I was like, mad, mad, mad. Obviously, I've just been at uni for the last year, bro. I'm thinking, this is crazy. Imagine I sign here, bro. My whole life's changed. Mm. And then, obviously, uh, I don't know if you've watched the video. Um, So, obviously, I trained for the first first day. First session was, loved it, bro. Like, yeah top quality the lads were good as well i think it was like a 19s or 21s or something like that yeah, but yeah. they are some top players um second session good session again light one before the game then the game was like there was two halves so two 11s i was the first 11 i was playing striker they're trying, to see, they're trying to see where you're on yeah yeah striker yeah. right back but to that's, striker that's now. what that's what but yeah i was a uh, right back at liverpool yeah, and so then Blackpool. At Blackpool, I went as a winger, but there was a coach there. He put me in the 10. More freedom. Wait. You know what I mean? I can go both ways. Did you so, have the tech, though? Bro, I had the tech, bro. I was a winger. <laughs> bro, even, I wasn't even a right back like that. Yeah. I was a winger, but they played me right back for a couple of seasons. You know what I mean? Mm. I didn't want to play there at the start. So, I went into the 10. But obviously, with the formation, I can play striker as well. I can play on the wing. So then I was... Uh, guys, that's why I wanted the striker so I could adapt. You know what I mean? I was like, cool, I can play strikers. You know what I mean? But I've went there now. I didn't really get that much chances. You know what I mean? The ball was coming, trying to hold it up. Yeah, it's just, just bobbing away. I'm running in, trying to get a chance, not coming. And then after that, the second team got beat. So we went off. That elevens went off. The second team came on. The gaffers went inside, screaming at everyone. Bro, I'm like, Whoa. no way. They got beat. Oh, this is not good for me. He's in a bad mood. You know what I mean? This is my last day on trial, bro. I'm trying to speak to him, see what's going on, going to go on next because they're supposed to train with the first team the next day. I was thinking, surely I'm going to train with the first team tomorrow. Imagine that, like, three days on trial. Surely they'll give me a bit longer. Went back to the hotel because he stormed off now. He's called my agent that I was with at the time. Obviously, I went out with him and he was just like, yeah, even if he was fit, this and that. I don't think he'll play at a high level. No oh, bro, and way. I'm hearing that. Thing. After three days, I had a good three days, bro. I'm thinking, what? Has he actually just said no that? No way. Has he actually just said that? And then from there, went back to Loughborough, yeah. It was mad. But that was another setback. It just gave you a 
bang to yeah, the chest. Literally. That's a bang to the literally. face. No, that's that's a bang to the face. That's, bro, it was, it was a gut shot, bro. But uh, I didn't let it affect me, do you know what I mean? Because like I said, I, I know what I can do. Um, So I took it on the chin, bro. Yeah. That's obviously his opinion and that, but yeah. Uh, that's it. Football's opinion. Yeah. I had... A similar experience when yeah. I got released after Chelsea. Yeah. I went to Tottenham, innit? Yeah. And had a couple of days there. Similar thing. Okay. And the opinion of a goalkeeper coach, he was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's all right, but yeah. not at this level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone shot. Mm. Gone shot to the chest. It's but it just shows it, yeah. opinions. Yeah. Like, one one coach will be like, yeah, yeah, having you. Yeah. But then another one will just be like, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need that. Lucky breakthrough. Yeah, literally. In Galatasaray, did they have, did they speak a different language? And yeah, Turkish, so I'm just there. Some of them try to speak English, but I'm just there like... So how do you Indian, understand bro. what they're saying? I think the coach spoke a bit of English. So he was speaking to me, it, but to everyone else, he's speaking Turkish in it. So I'm just there just chilling, looking at what I'm supposed to do next and whatever. So yeah, where it's tough, yeah, language barrier. Big, big. Yeah, yeah. English, bro. <laughs> What do you think about that? Like a lot of English players nowadays are actually going ever since COVID, they're actually going over abroad trying mm. to see uh, what mm. can do. Yeah. Well, so obviously if you're going abroad, it's up to you to learn that language, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, you gotta gotta be able to adapt. Do you speak any other any other languages? Just Yoruba, Yoruba, Irish. Yeah. I speak French in it because my parents from yeah, Ivory Coast. So yeah, yeah. So hopefully, I was hoping to try and go to like a maybe a French, French team, if I was yeah. to go to abroad. Do you know what I mean? So. Be easier for me. Yeah. So you're back at Loughborough now. Yeah. How was that? That transition. Seeing Falcao. Yeah. To back to. To Loughborough. be fair, it's not that that bad of a transition. No, Loughborough is top. Yeah, top. yeah, nah, Loughborough is a good uni. Do you know what I mean? Um, went straight back into the ones. Um. And then fin- that was at like near the end of the season, so finished the season off there. Then preseason came. I went back home again. I think that at that time I was at, I think I went into FC United. I went to City Liverpool there as well that summer. Then went back to Loughborough again. I was trying to stay at home. Yeah. But obviously. I've, you're, not, you're not pushing, you're not yeah. pushing the uni team. Yeah. So I was weighing out which one's better for me. Um, and essentially Loughborough weighed it. So I went back to uni. Yeah. yeah. Went back in October again. And just went, went through it again. Run through that cycle. What cycle? I was going to lectures, training, um, trying to make it through Loughborough and then go on from there. Yeah. Mm. And after that year, did your mindset change in terms of uni being like a second choice to your football? Um. I'll say that again, sorry. So you, you spoke about you going to uni. Was this if your you, um, football no is not going to be anymore? So mm-hmm. when you went back for that second year, mm-hmm. was it like, oh, football's done now? Or, oh, obviously. Or did it, did, from after going, going to the lectures and seeing, oh, I'm balancing these yeah. two. Yeah, did you, obviously. Did your mindset open? Uh, yeah, because I've, I've seen it. It's like a... A backup, isn't it? So mm. as a foundation, obviously you gotta get through it. I got that to fall back on. If football doesn't work out, I can go do something. Obviously, I study business finance, so I could go mm. do something business related. Obviously, I do my barber and stuff like that, so I can transfer that into that. So I knew, as much as I don't feel like I should be uh, at uni or whatever. I know there's a benefit of being there. So I'm going to take it with both hands and that's what I thought. I'd take it with both hands and make sure I've got it there as a backup as well. That's it. Yeah. And how's your time through the academy system influenced that? How well, how well you've been able to do at uni? Um, obviously, going to Rainhill, you do your GCSEs and whatever. Mm. But then at Blackpool, we only did... B Tech Sport. B Tech Sport. Yeah. So the jump from doing B Tech Sport going straight into uni was a big jump. Yeah. Because I didn't 
the last time I did business was in year eight. Yeah, eight. So people are talking you about business in year eight. Yeah, I did business studies, but then I, I dropped it before GCSE. They only made me do like five or something like that. So, but the jump from doing B tech and going straight into full time education, it was it's like took me a back of bell. Like, mm. right, people are talking about economics, and I'm like, what? What's going on? They've done they've done this at A level and that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it was tough for me, but. I think it's just something you got to, I had to adapt to, innit? Yeah. No, that's why I, I have to respect it. Yeah. Because. But you, you've done it as well. Your, um, yeah. I was going to ask you how you managed to balance it. Uh, because <laughs> I find it tough to balance it on it's, top of everything I'm already doing. So. Yeah. It's, so it is tough, that you're but. Doing it. Yeah. It's, I think it's possible. So I've done, I started doing, when I signed off to Chelsea, I signed for West Ham. Mm-hmm. Is that so, a scholar? Yeah, as a okay. scholar. But then I was just like, after that first release, mm-hmm. seeing that, bruv, football, mm-hmm. it can be taken like that, mm-hmm. innit? So, I, but, but, but as well, done quite well in my mm-hmm. GCSEs. So mm-hmm. I was like, mm, let me keep pushing. Because oh, at the back of my mind, after that release, it had a big effect on me. Okay. To see that, okay, cool, this football thing is not, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not a gara. So I spoke to the education staff at West Ham going into being a scholar and we were mm. just like, I was just always saying, I need to do maybe an A-level mm-hmm. or something. And at the time, I liked psychology because okay. I've done it Is that what GCSE, you studied? yeah. Okay. So I'm literally about to graduate with psychology. But, okay. So as a scholar, I've done it. They like produce a schedule mm-hmm. where I'll be able to do my A-level and the B-Tech sport okay. alongside being a scholar. Mm-hmm. But What was that like? Was, was that hectic? I was going to say, is that like jam-packed? Jam packed, yeah, but I wouldn't have it any other way okay. though. Because Did you have enough, enough free time, yeah. It was calm, I was still banging Fortnite okay, in the yeah, evenings yeah, with my yeah. guys back then <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. after the work, <laughs> yeah. But it required a lot of discipline, like instead mm. of so I was at, at digs at West Ham, yeah. all the man them yeah. banging PlayStation, yeah. banging FIFA, yeah. banging this, and I was just doing my work. But then after I finished that, I'll go and mm. still bang, bang with them, mm-hmm. but it really helped me into where I am today, where mm-hmm. it's allowed to open more doors and put more power into my hands. Yeah. But it was tough mm-hmm. because the schedule was like um, 8 a.m. Because normally you start, as a scholar at Blackpool, what time did you guys start B-Tech? I'm trying to think. Because it was more, one day was midday. Yeah. I'm trying, if I remember correctly, one day was midday. And then, because we train before it and go to go to the college, and then there's another day where it was like a whole day, so from nine till four or something Swear. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, because you you guys did it alongside with a college. Yeah, we we actually went into a college. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. See, that was different. We we had to do ours at eight thirty. Okay. In the morning. Yeah. For like before training. Out, yeah, before training, okay. and then breakfast, and then out for training. Really. And then if you if you have to catch up on it. You yeah. might have to be in at 8 a.m. Yeah. But then because I was doing A-levels as, as well, I missed that B-Tech so many times because okay. I had my A-level lesson with, in the school next door to West Ham Training Ground, next okay. door to Chadwell Heath. So I'd have to go in there and yeah. then leave straight away yeah. to get to training. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm still in my like sixth form uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I walk into the training ground, all the guys are always at like, school, boy, yeah, you know, yeah, taking okay, a mick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I have to quickly like, run from my my lesson yeah get changed straight out for training Mm. because i might be with the 23s like as a scholar across the road and it's just yeah it was so how was that for you seeing obviously you're saying you're training with the 23s and then maybe it's looking positive for you and then what you got let go as well i got let go after a year being a pro there okay but with goalkeepers, it's like they always need a goalkeeper to yeah, go <laughs> yeah. go train, mm-hmm. train with them. But to be fair, I was I was on the bench quite a few times, mm-hmm. 18s and that. But as you see now in hindsight, like mm-hmm. none of that matters. Mm-hmm. If you're not playing, like it's, yeah. it's techie. Mm-hmm. But I think there was a, as a scholar, especially a first year, you're not really going to play that. Mm-hmm. I didn't really play that much because there's all the guys, yeah. all the I, goalkeepers. As a scholar, I played in my first year. So see, I was like... You're the guy. Yeah, I was thinking... <laughs> It's looking good for me, do you know what I mean? See, it's 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 so crazy how yeah. it can change. Yeah. So much. It's it's difficult. But to be fair, doing that A level, 
Like all the guys with all my guys on my yeah. age group were just taking a mic. Yeah. It was two of two me and two other guys done it okay. at the school next door to the and other guys was just like, yeah. Mm. It's not that thing. Football, football, football. Mm-hmm. But then now I've gone on, continued with the psychology, studied alongside. So I studied in my first year as a pro at West Ham, studied by distance learning. Mm. I think that's what really helped as well. Okay. Cause they were allowed my course. I don't actually have to go in for my lectures. Oh, really? Yeah, it's literally all oh, online. That's, so you've not left it. So you're not on campus or anything. Nothing. All right. So that's and that's that's one thing I always stress on my channel. Like, yeah. you've got to try and find something that works with your with your system because it's online. Just, so you're, what, your, distance uni, learning. your uni allowed distance learning. Yeah. So literally, they the course runs parallel. So there's guys who do the course on campus, but then you can have, you can, you can have the choice to do it by distance learning. Bro, I didn't know that. So I've actually left home. Do you know what I mean? I left home. Yeah. I but know. to be fair, Loughborough, you have to because yeah. it's such a good uni. Yeah, yeah. So they allow distance learning. Yeah. And especially with the football program as well. Yeah. That was one big thing that um, like drew me to the uni because mm. it's like the uni so good. It feels like a club itself. Yeah. The facilities are top. The coaches and ex- Wolves coach so he's like proper the pitches are sick <sighs> and and all the players are similar to us as well it's like some have been at academy some are trying to play higher so it's definitely a good good uni so what the is what's the quality like compared to that like Blackpool Liverpool as in playing wise playing yeah bro there's some players bro the last couple of years have been some one player called Tope he's at Sutton United now yeah he got a move I've yeah. seen that so the quality is there do you know what I mean so there's is there's a pathway, there's hope. Definitely, if you, yeah. If you go and do your team, yeah. yeah. But as much as there's a pathway, and I don't want people to think that if I want to play football, I'm I need to go uni. Uni, like that doesn't make sense in it. it. Yeah, only yeah. Only go if you have, if you want to go, if you have to go. But it's not like it's a guaranteed uh, route. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of people who follow me, they're like, oh, I want to come uni so I can be like you. But I'm thinking, <laughs> you don't know what I'm <laughs> going through. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but don't think that you can go pro from going uni. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go pro, go through the football route. If you go through non-league mm. or whatever, obviously the education is the, the backup as well. But yeah, it's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. But then do you not think going through that, uh, going through that uni route mm-hmm. provides in the long term? Yeah provides better chances yeah that's what beyond I'm football yeah literally that's as, as well as that yeah is that the backup the security of knowing if I don't make it that I got my my degree there I can go use that into something else yeah um the le- the lessons you learn from moving away from home cooking for yourself yeah knowing you have to wake up that discipline of making sure you wake up doing what needs to be done um it kind of it kind of takes you out of that bubble though yeah. the academy system bubble yeah. yeah it's completely different isn't it but yeah it's definitely something it depends how you take it you can take it as a bad experience some people love being at home they can't be away from they get homesick but if you look at it as like, like a challenge going out to conquer what you need to do mm. that's how i look at it um you talk about that uni experience. I've seen that yeah. TikTok going viral where the pigeons. The pi- yeah, that's another one, bro. Absolutely <laughs> wrecked your room. Literally, that that happened because that was my first year. So I was thinking, I went home for Christmas. The agent's telling me, look, January window, you're out of there, mate. Take all your stuff. <laughs> so I've took all my stuff home. Yeah, he was that confident. Yeah. But I was like, I've took all my stuff home. Went from... Christmas, went to January, went to February, still nothing. So I'm thinking, can I swear? But I can't swear. <laughs> <laughs> I was Why like, not? like mad. I'm actually, I, I have to go back to uni, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Took all my stuff back now. I've walked in. I thought someone playing a prank on me, bro. I saw feathers and that on the floor. I was like, what else going on here? I looked <laughs> further up. I've walked in, I'm seeing pigeons on my TV, like pigeons of shit on my TV. No way. Pigeons are just pooed over my bed. I was like, oh my gosh. I've called up. I was like, like, you're going to have to help me move out. <laughs> something, you know what I mean? They was like, we can help you clean. We can't help you move out. All the rooms are taken. I was like, mad. I've got to clean all this up. But my boy was like, you can't stay there, bro. Like, 
pigeons are toxic and that, do you know what I mean? Hey, yo. If you sleep in there, you never know what you could catch. I, I thought, cool, but I needed, I was traveling that day, so I needed somewhere to put my stuff down. I couldn't travel, come back to the pigeon yeah. poo, so I thought, let me just do the most I can do and then get off. As I'm cleaning, I've lifted up the mattress, bro. I saw another pigeon under my bed. No bro. way. Like, oh my, bro, I pooed myself, bro. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is going on? They've ended up taking me out of there. I went to put all my stuff at my boys. And then I went to London, came back. Mm. And then, yeah, they gave me another room. Oh, thank but God that experience that. was mad, Is that because you left the window open? Bro, I, th- I thought I left the window closed. Yeah. So I must have closed it, but not locked it. So they went, but then the wind must have just opened oh, it over time pain. and it was fully open, bro. And then, yeah, the, wind, the bears must have just flew in there, just made it their own home, oh, bro. Head loss. And that agent, yeah, he must have been vexed at him. With him, he was actually um, a close mate of my dad's. Mm. So before uni, he was actually helping me. He was at Blackpool with me, talking to the coaches and whatever. He was like, look, I'll make sure that you don't have to go uni. So I was relying on him as well. Got to the point where uni was around the corner, bro, and he's just ghosted me, bro. I thought, obviously, I know it was tough trying to find me a club, whatever, but a bit, cum- bit of communication give me nothing, bro. Agents man. and he just left me out and left me out in the dark, bro. I just ended up starting uni. He's not shouted me nothing, bro. I was like, agents. this is mad. You know, that's a common theme that happens with agents, bro. There's a lot. Once there's nothing, once you're not pushing, nah, they just go all quiet. Once it gets a bit it's- tough, like. They don't, but you can at least tell me, okay, I can't find Literally. you something. You're playing with my hopes now. Yeah. So. It's so, I think it's so difficult. I've even spoken to older players as well. And yeah. they're like, it's so difficult to find like a good agent that will actually take care of you in that sense. Mm-hmm. Where even if things are not the way they are, mm-hmm. or you're not getting that move, they're still communicating mm-hmm. and handling a good situation. Yeah. But a lot of the time, Most especially it. back back in the day, yeah. all these agents would just sell you dreams, yeah. this and that. That now, bro, when agents approach me, I don't even get excited anymore. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You got an opportunity, cool. I believe when I see it. That's it. So yeah. That's it. And they're even really regulating it more now. You see okay. agents have to do an exam now. Is that right? Yeah. yeah right you got you've got to do an exam to actually act as a FIFA agent. Oh really? Be registered and that. Which is which I think is good because yeah. all these guys, family, friends, and that they can they ruin guys, you know. Yeah, literally, they ruin guys. Putting your future in their hands as well. So yeah. it's like, but some sometimes that's what that's make or break in football. Mm-hmm. It's about who you know. Sometimes you who get you know. seen. I mean, you must have seen moves at Blackpool or Liverpool of mm. guys you for like. How's what's he happen? doing here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. how's that? What you get. Yeah. And then they've just gone on to see to do bigger things like it's you get so off, off of it's me. not only football it's life to be fair you've got your network your network is your net worth yeah literally you hear that all the time innit? that's it so let's dive into andy beyond football now okay influencer how did i, I want to say that man am i an influencer nah, now this nah. guy, i would liken you to chunks me, bro. philly all of that nah i don't you do can, that bro. you can I'm do one of that, that. We'll you be got, there soon, no one day. That's it. You got the skills to do that. Yeah. But I wanted to. Get, how did you start getting into barbering? Barbering came. Oh, so you can see my transgression. I don't know. You trim my, yourself. Yeah, that's me, bro. Nah. Yeah, so, when, am I, when am I coming through? Bro, well, I've got my stuff here, bro. I can no do it way. Yeah, yeah, bro. My, I, I, I haven't got a trim so, yesterday. Yeah, What's yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, literally, uh, that started lockdown as well. Okay. Obviously, I went to a barber and stuff like that, but they always used to just mess me up bro like the oh, shape up would be oh, crazy yeah. i'm thinking you're waiting for that trim every week mm. and you get there and they, they do the fade okay but then the shape was like a bit gazing i thought let me just do it myself learn how to do it myself that was 2020 obviously my, i got my little brother as well I tried it on him yeah came out a bit clean do you know what i mean my first boy, time yeah first time my boy wanted one as well no way and then obviously my friendship crew i was just doing them and i was like you should set up a, uh, a barber page mm. At first, I was like, I'm only doing it to cut my own hair. Do you know what I mean? I'm only cutting you lot out of, because you're my boys and that. But I was like, nah, you're actually good. So I made it into a, like a little business. I went from there, yeah. went to uni. I didn't want to be everyone's barber, do you know what I mean? But my boy wanted one, so I didn't him. And I just went from there, where the mouth, everyone just, just kept off. coming. Yeah, Why? yeah. Nah, that's yeah. so lit. Yeah. Um, how did that, How did? where did the content creation come from? The skills? Or um, are you just a multi-talented guy? Jack of all trades, <laughs> you know what I mean? But the content stuff, 
like I told you, I'm like, I've, I'm always, I've always got my phone. I'm always filming mm. stuff. I got memories from back in the days, bro. So, um, you reckon you got some from Warwick? That tournament, Premier League tournament. I probably didn't even have a phone back then, bro. I don't, yeah, nah, nah. I so it. yeah, uh, with the content and stuff, I just like. I enjoy editing, bro. I don't know why. Like mm. it's something I've got a passion in. So like all my videos, I know if you take if you take uh what's the word? Take what? When you really take it when you if you really you take, take it in. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see the edits. I've put a lot into my uh, edits as well. So it takes a lot of t- some you nights. You see not, what goes on behind the scenes. Bro, I'm not sleeping, not bro. I don't sleep. Hours. I don't sleep deep some nights because I'm just editing my videos. <sighs> the YouTube ones take forever, bro. So I'll take I'll film it. I, you like won't know, but I, I actually script it. Mm. So I write it down what I want to say. Yeah, you have to though. I look at it, I speak, I, but then I chop it all up, chop it all up, chop it all up. Yeah. Then I add in the visuals so you can actually see what I'm the talking memes, about. The memes, the transitions, the audios, the transitions, everything, and then just throw it all into one. And then we go from there and I slap it up on YouTube. Nah, but then your content are... is top, top level. Nah, I appreciate How the it, bro. heck? Did you get to that level of quality, that detail? I think. I just know, thought, multiple platforms as well. Yeah. TikTok, YouTube. Yeah. What? I always, I just like, I want everything to be clean in it. Mm. I like everything to be clean. You can take it in. And when I tell stories and stuff like that, I want you to feel like you're there in it. So when I tell stories, I, I make sure there's detail. And as well, the way I get details from, I actually journal a lot. Okay. So I write down like big events what happened um every day i write down this what happened today this what happened today this what happened today and then i've been doing it for years now so when i need to look back at what happened on this date i can look i've actually read how i felt what actually happened so i can tell you literally day uh word for word what happened on that day so that's why i'm so good at uh top yeah being able to tell a story or why that actually started off the a coach called steven torpe he's at city now head of uh Head of the academy there. He he told me to write down big events that have happened in your life. Mm. And I've always thought in the back of my head, yeah, I need to do that, I need to do that. So then one year, obviously, at first it was on my phone, but I I've, I've, feel better when I write it out. So from there, I've just been writing it out from like 2018. But then I've obviously caught up from all the years before, all the big events. But from 2018, I just writ day to day what happens every day. Yeah. So then from there, that's where I went from there. Just kept journaling, journaling and still do it till this day. So and yeah. that influences the editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, so then what was your process of learning to get to that level though? Of editing and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. I think, I don't know, things just in me, bro. Literally, I don't, I've not learned anything, bro. Uh, I'm not even joking. Blood, it's, it's in, in there, the bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, stop that. Yeah. It's just something I've always had, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I've, now I'm just capping it capitalizing on it so okay yeah so liverpool academy yeah blackpool mm-hmm. navigating uni mm-hmm. non-league system who is who is andy kanga beyond football um i think beyond football just someone who's trying to reach his potential i'm all about self-improvement um, I got big dreams, and I think that's how you've got to live. Always aspiring to become your, the best version of yourself, and that's why I try and do day to day until I get there. And if football was to be taken away from you, who would you be? That's a great question. But obviously, like we said, I'm doing a lot away from football as well. So, uh, who would that be? <laughs> deep in it, hits. it's deep. It's deep. <laughs> Cause football is a big foundation in my life. Do you know what I mean? Like we yeah. said, all the skills you learn from football, not just on the pitch, off the pitch. But right now, if it was to be taken away, I'd like to say, I'd still be the same person. And just yeah. And just yeah, what's and just, yeah. yeah. And um I'm not sure that's actually a good question, bro. I'm not sure. Like ideally, beyond football, mm. 
career pathway? You can do barbering, you yeah. can do this. Yeah. What would it be for you? That would what well, I actually en- I enjoy barbering. Yeah. Like I see it as like a form of art. Um something I actually enjoy doing. So that probably would be another pathway. But there's a lot a lot of stuff I enjoy doing. I like making music. I like listening to music, like making mm. music, stuff like that. So yeah, it's studio. A, bro, I'm going studio soon, bro. No Tonight, way. Tomorrow, bro. You need to bring me in. Yeah, literally. I'm trying to. What what type what type of vibe? Afro beats, rap, anything, bro. Yeah, I got that, bro. I got a voice for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got a whole personality for it. You yeah. know I could put you on. I yeah. know some A and R's. You Is know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I could. There's a lot of different mm. opportunities I could delve into. So that's something I've been blessed with as well. So. Well, obviously, football's the main main goal, so yeah. That's why. But I'm at least you, at least on. you know that mm-hmm. there's so many different mm-hmm. has the, there's so many different paths, yeah, or exactly. areas or industries you can go into. Yeah. Has that changed from now compared to back then at Liverpool, back then at Blackpool? Mm. Well, I think I think I've, I'm still the same person from back then, so I yeah. still always had these skills. But now, um. The way that my life's going, I've been exposed to doing other things more. So obviously football's not really taking off how it should have done. Mm. So if the, if I wasn't football, I don't think I would have been doing all my content and stuff. I wouldn't have to cut people's hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Like going into the real world, having a job and stuff like that. So um, I think I've always had them skills, but now I've just been exposed more to, to actually doing it. Yeah. You said you've had to go into the real world and get a job. Mm. My first job How? was was last last year in a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. I was in a warehouse with the Amazon Amazon workers and stuff like Trench that. Trench work. Trenches. Waking up night shifts. Crazy, bro. Hmm. Crazy, but you gotta do what you gotta do as well. You this is the real do, yeah. I saw that that's I side. respect it yeah. though. There's you... people there's people there that do it year in, year out, bro. Hmm. That's they they've got no choice. So How much different is it to the world of football? Completely different, bro. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure people there don't want to be there, but they have to to, to mm. provide for their families and stuff like that. So I respect them for that. But yeah, but yeah, like what? What's the vibe? How did you? Because a lot of guys I've seen they wouldn't humble themselves to go do that. But <laughs> yeah, was it one of them ones where you gotta do what you gotta, you gotta do? do? You need that money. Yeah. You gotta have a source of income somewhere. Um. And at the time, that was what I needed to do. Mm. So I made sure I sucked it up, bro. I got to do it. That's yeah. It. And I see, uh, I've, I'm a big believer that readers are leaders. And I can see, okay. I can tell that you read. I try, to, I try to read as much as I yeah. can in it, but it is tough because it's like, sometimes I get bored, bro, mm. from reading. But I know there's a lot of knowledge in books. So I tried what's to. The, what's the best book you read or what are you reading? I've now? read The Secret. That's actually quite a religious one. Mm. Um, I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um, but it's been obviously a few years since I've read them. But the book I'm still trying to finish now is The Science of Self Discipline. Yeah. That's another self reflection one. So I try to read stuff that can actually benefit me. I mean, I could read, is it non fiction, like fake books, but. Mm. Non fiction. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. It's not that too. Yeah, nah, nah, I'd rather read self improvement books like that so I can actually take lessons from it and put it into my life. Yeah. Yeah. The book Secret. You said that's a yeah. Christian book. Yeah. That's, what's yeah. the what's the biggest thing that's impacted you from reading that? Um I'm I'm trying to re- remember like key points in it, but essentially it just brought me closer to God as well. Do you know what mm. I mean? Um how I can use him to navigate my life choices and stuff like that, trying to be more like him. And um yeah, just use it positively in, into my my life and how I live it. Yeah. Yeah. And has your how has your relationship with God helped you through those different experiences yeah. in this, football and outside of football? Sometimes it's brought me close. Sometimes it's brought me further away. Mm. Cause you're like you feel like you're working so hard and then something will happen. You'll be like, why have you, why has this happened to me? Like, but if you change your perspective, you just, something I've done to cope with it is, um, 
see how I can benefit from it, how it's how it's made me stronger and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, instead of thinking, oh, why has this happened to me? See the lessons you can take from it. And why do you believe? That's one question I like to ask people. Why do I believe? believe? Why do you believe in God? Yeah. I've always felt his presence in my life. Mm. Obviously, growing up as a, coming from a Christian home, um, it's been something I was born into as well, but a lot of people have been born into it, but they don't actually feel that presence. But I feel like I've always felt that presence. Yeah. And I've, um, as of recently, it's even increasingly more. I started going to church, to the t- church called RY in Loughborough. I got, I went there and I, the first time I went, like I felt that spirit, like really spiritual, that presence. And from there, uh, things have started actually opening up as well. So I'm praying more now, reading my Bible more. I feel like I'm growing more as a Christian as well. Yeah. So yeah. In the non-league system, <coughs> system. <Yeah. laughs> In the non-league system, you see so many crazy things. Mm-hmm. Like what they get up to mm-hmm. on a night out in the mm-hmm. change room. How have you navigated being a Christian in the in the in the football world? Mm-hmm. Um essentially you know what's right and wrong. You know what you should be doing and what you should I'm not saying I'm perfect, you know what I mean? Mm. But you know, what you should dive into, what you should be doing, and what essentially some people do what they want as well, but you can't force your beliefs or whatever on them. So I just focus on myself, see what I can do yeah. better and stuff like that. And just let people be themselves. Everyone's on their own journey. Um and yeah. So what advice would you give? younger players who've been maybe on a similar journey to you in the academy mm-hmm. but really still pushing on we're both still pushing on to mm-hmm. go up the pyramid we sh- we've been at that level mm-hmm. you've seen that okay cool what advice would you give them to keep going or what is what has motivated you to keep going um i'd say like i always say if you do have a dream why would you stop until you've got this? You know what I mean? If you have that, something you're you're driven towards, no matter what the setbacks are, just keep going. Mm. Even though it's going to be tough. But if you believe you can do it, then I'd say go all in. Plan A, make that your plan A. No plan B. Yeah. Yeah. But when with football, sometimes you can give all of your life to it. It won't give you anything back. Mm-hmm. Or do you, do, you, do, you, do you believe that? I feel like you'd, you'd only know until it's the end though, really. Because mm. we could be doing the same thing now. Yeah. I'm it's putting true. it all in. Um, it's true. But we'd only say it's give us nothing if we stop right now. Facts. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what keeps me going. Yeah. Because ultimately... You've seen all those stories of guys who've made it through, who've done this, this and that. Mm-hmm. You guys you grew up playing with, mm-hmm. doing this, playing at the highest level. Mm-hmm. That fuels me to go harder. Yeah. If he can do it, why can't I do mm-hmm. it? So, yeah. And I think it's possible. To me, it's all about the faith. It says yeah. faith is a substance of yeah. things hoped for. Yeah. So, that's it. Yeah. Anything else you want to discuss before you wrap this up and go into our little quick fire mm. question nah nothing let's go straight into it straight into it yeah cool let's go who's your football idol and role model um football idol i've always wanted to be like sterling yeah is that why you copy this trim Nah, I don't care. Like, <laughs> <bro, I start. laughs> favorite nah. football memory. Favorite football memory. <laughs> Probably scoring again against Barcelona, bro. Wow. Yeah, I came off the bench. Me and another lad called Jared Harlock. He's at Blackburn. You played now. against Ansu Fat. Ansu Fat. Yeah, that was in Japan. Oh. But this one was in Spain. See, you didn't even we asked one day yeah. for another day. Yeah. <laughs> This one was in Spain, yeah. Scoring against them in Spain was mad, yeah. Why? Yeah. Under what? I'm trying to maybe 
13, 14, bro. It was quite early on, yeah. 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 Uh, international tournaments. Like yeah. One. If you could play for any professional club in the world, what which would which one would it be? Liverpool. Who's the toughest opponent you face on the pitch? When we played you, like, I don't know if it was a Ben Elliott or was it? Yeah. Oh, someone left. <laughs> someone left me in the splits, bro. Ben Elliott. Yeah. Someone. Fostino, Marcel yeah, Lewis, yeah, all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Ballers. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, probably one of you. Like, okay. Yeah. Or when we played Arsenal, but that was the whole team, bro. I don't know who. Took it. Yeah. That, yeah. I don't know if he was our age, but yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite football skill or trick? My favorite skill. I don't know if you know about this one. You roll it with your right foot mm. and you push it with the inside of your left. You don't know about that one. Ah, I'm not. I'm a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably my favorite one. Yeah. Okay. And last question: What is your ultimate goal in football? To get to the highest, where, wherever that is, whether it's Prem, whether it's Champions League, whether it's Championship, just make sure I reach my potential. Say no more. Yeah. GG Andy Kanga. It's been Thank a pleasure. You. To have you on the Beyond Football podcast. Pleasure to be here, bro. Nah. Thanks for having me. We're still pushing, keep pushing to the top. Literally. That's it. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, leave a little rating, leave a little review. Check Andy Kanga's content out because it's top. Cheers, lad. He's going, he's going to the top. I've seen it. <laughs> I'm co-signing it. <laughs> so it's going to be there in the description, all of that. Appreciate it, but boss. yeah, till next time, we're out.